Hey everyone, and welcome back to another week with the HLP. This week, I get to welcome you into episode 231, Suffocation, No Leaving. Do you like liquor and things that go boom? Then buckle up, listener, because this one's for you. Prepare yourself for the Hideous Laughter Podcast. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Hideous Laughter Podcast, episode 231. You know, I said we'd end this around 250. I wonder if we have 20 episodes left. Might end this combat around 250, am I right? You guys have three ghouls left. <laughs> Calm down. I mean, to be honest, I am a little worried that the rest of this is 100% initiative order at all times. <laughs> Could be. With all the haunts. And we're done. <laughs> These ghouls, like level seven rogues. <laughs> Think you'll be fine. This combat will end in the first five minutes of today. Um, but it's the first time we're playing in a long time. How are you guys feeling? We took a long holiday break. I don't know. I feel pretty grossed out when I think about what my character's been doing. Because my head, it just continued. And uh, she's, she's just been, been eating stuff. Eating the various Remnants. body parts <laughs> on the table. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm, other, I'm doing good. Uh, I'm ready to play. You have two characters, so you can just throw the gross one out if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. It's the small one, too. So it's like her her body is mostly at other people's bodies. Oh, yeah, she's engorged. She's mm. full as a tick. Where is Air Bear when you need him? <laughs> On the other <laughs> side of the field. Yep. Can he not clean this up? He'd willingly do this. Yeah, give my man something to eat. Yeah. I mean, he's 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 definitely hungry. It's been it's been a minute since he got to eat. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a minute since he had fresh meat. Well, Brooks, uh, you got a drink over there? I had a long day today. So I've just got myself a nice, clear, and non-carbonated water. All right. Emily, you also stick into the land of the clear, non-carbonated waters? I am not, thanks to our patrons. <laughs> they uh, gave me a corpse reviver, which is gin, lemon juice, orange liqueur, and dry vermouth. I think it's pretty appropriate for my characters who bring people back from the dead so that they're still alive. Yeah, you've done a bit of corpse arriving, this book. And I think we've had that one before, too. I think we have. We have. That's a good one. This one uh, was suggested by uh, Eric, 10 Lawn Gnomes, and he gave it a fun twist. It did go up on the drink poll uh, for our group drink. And if it was a group drink, it would have been a corpse reviver, but wrong ingredients only and no overlapping ingredients. So what? we would have had to get really creative and no one could have the same drink. What, what does that mean, though? Could I just make myself a rum and Coke? Yep. As long as Thank no you. one else is using rum and Coke. <laughs> OK, so it's like everybody. So Steve drinks a beer. You drink a wine. Haley drinks a cider. Uh, Brooks drinks something with vodka and I drink something with bourbon. In it. Let me let me throw an alt here. How many ingredients are in a core survivor? I think I said I like think... four. Let's for the sake of the argument say it's five. Then we would just all pick one. <laughs> one ingredient. Yeah. Of the yeah. yeah, someone's got the vermouth what locked down. What are you down. drinking? A cup of vermouth. <laughs> oh. oh, just lime juice. Full cup lime of lime juice. juice. <laughs> Equal parts for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good idea. I, I mean, it, iffy, iffy. Well, n- next five part drink. I mean, it's it's not a good idea. We we don't want to get locked into doing this, Steve. What if somebody? Yeah, <laughs> if we're doing equal parts, how big or small are we going? Because uh, somebody's going to get the the rum or whatever's in a corpse survivor. Mm. Gin. Is it gin? We'd have to roll off for whoever has to drink the hard liquor. Just a cup yeah. of it. Yeah, because it would be you, we would essentially multiply everything by five right because like this like, yeah five five, gin, five right? parts yeah five <laughs> parts gin you're good to go that's just called a corpse <laughs> <laughs> just a corpse what are you drinking steve 
I am drinking a beer from Two Brothers Artisan Brewing. It's called Peppermint Bark Porter, brewed with dark cocoa and peppermint leaves. Very excited for this one. Sounds right up my alley. Peppermint Bark Porter. Yeah. Huh. The only time I've had something peppermint was a peppermint white stout that I didn't like very much. Mm. Yeah. Peppermint has let, to be real subtle. Is. Yeah. Yeah, and they were definitely going Ooh. for something like a peppermint bark, which is like a chocolatey peppermint. Yeah. So I get that. It's that's pretty much what I got here. Does it work? Okay, they probably don't it. nail it perfectly, but I think they're pretty much fulfilling the promise of the premise. It's pretty tasty. Oh, you know what? That that yeah. works. That works just fine. Yeah. Haley, you got anything good over there? Yeah, I have a two robbers craft hard seltzer. It is a pineapple ginger. What are you doing? Hmm. That's different than the the drink you've been drinking for the past 18 weeks. And that would be correct. Um, so I was also gifted two boxes. I was going to say, I thought boxes. Carrie got you two packs of that. Yeah, so I did drink going. all mm-hmm. but like maybe one or two of those, though, on New Year's oh, Eve. Oh, on New Year's Eve. Oh, do the it. day she gave it to <laughs> me. So I, I do just, I was like, man, I'm going to take a break and... My stomach is like a little upset. And so the ginger in this, I felt like was a better call. Mm, oh, okay. Nothing like drinking on an upset stomach. <laughs> I get yelled at every time I have water. Yeah, well, you're not Brooks. <laughs> Brooks has earned it. How? <laughs> He's put the time in. He's put the time in. <laughs> Is it just because he won for the boys a couple times? Listen, he's, he's, put, put, the the, he's put the time in. <laughs> uh, as for me, I'm drinking a Smoogee Jams Blue Raspberry and Cupcake Ice Cream Heavily Fruited Sour Ale. It's a collaboration between Imprint Brewing and Barrel Culture Brewing. Mm. That's a lot of flavors. It is. Best believe I'm going to be wanting a sip of that. For sure. Oh, God. Decadent. <laughs> <laughs> that just tastes it. like a milkshake. Oh, like a Ooh. smoothie. Oh, very nice. Wow. And the can looks pretty cool, too. Yeah. That That is unbelievable. That is so goddamn good. It does not taste like a beer, I'll tell you what. No, it That's doesn't. Liter- it's literally like, I wouldn't even call it a fresh fruit smoothie. It's like a... <laughs> it's like a... So one of those, like, naked bottles? You know what kinda, I'm Kind of like that, yeah. Mm. Ooh. Wow, and it does have like a little bit of thickness to it. Yeah, great mouthfeel. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we rolling off? It's been so long, I can't remember where we're at with that. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think so. am the you only the one first out. one. You're the first one out? Okay. Okay. Here we go. Oh, yeah, we tied. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this, is what I, this is what I love and hate about the holidays. I love like taking a nice break and like looking back. Uh-huh. I hate that we ended both shows in between a combat mm-hmm. and yeah. took three weeks off. Oof. 14. 10. 6. 5. Oh, <laughs> boy. Oof. Wow, Steve, you're the highest. Hell yeah. Oh, he's tracking well. Yes. He's tracking well, folks. Right. Steve, new year, new you. New year, new me. Let's go. Get in the chalice. This is my year. Yeah, it's it's 20 money me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the year of the chalice. <laughs> well, when last we left our heroes... They continued to press the fight against the Tomb Giant and proceeded into the lower kind of vestibule area where there's a long table and several obese ghouls chowing down at the table and some kind of daemon sitting at the end of the table. This thin, disgusting creature almost like encouraging the feast around it until the Tomb Giant warned those creatures of you and combat ensued. You were able to defeat the daemon and the tomb giant uh, with a burst of radiance right at the end of last episode. And where we find you now, the party is still rather split with half the party kind of in the, I guess I'd call it like the prayer area proper and the other half of the party down in this sunken area with this feast table. Eclipse currently possessed to eat the body parts on the table so let's get right back into it Lyra spent her turn burst of radiancing to great effect I believe you moved and then burst of radiance am I correct that is correct but I don't think the Brolani did anything yeah I don't think your summon had done anything they're not going to do too much uh, but they do see that the fight has now moved 
far to the other side of the room and actually they can see where Lyra went to, but they might not be able to see all the way to the combat. So to gain a little bit more move speed, uh, they are going to, as a standard action, turn into their wind form. So instead of being humanoid, now a swirling body of air, which gives okay. them a, a hundred foot perfect fly speed. Awesome. So they can just fly right up in a straight line to get up near the combat. All right. Now, is that a an action to turn into wind form? Yes, it is. So that's that's all it can do. So that's your turn. Ikmer, you're up. All right. He was able to protect, uh, or bodyguard rather, Eclipse being five feet away. He is not going to move from where he is, but still full attack. Two of these ghouls right next to him. And if he does end up killing one, he will be able to move over or I guess shift his attacks to the to the next one. So okay. 39. Which one, you, which one are you starting with? The one up on the table or the one up on the stairs? The unholy one on the table. Okay, well, a 39 certainly hits. Fantastic. Is it worth it to roll damage now? Uh, why don't you Why don't you start rolling me some damage with each of these hits? Because uh, this one had already been damaged by Durin, so it took a pretty big chunk from Durin. Ooh, pretty hefty damage. 37. Okay, 37. It looks like it's on its last leg, but it is still up. Okay. Unfortunately, that was really my only good roll. It does a 27 hit. A 27 does hit. Okay. And does a 26. 26 also hits. Ooh. Okay. I will roll that uh, 27 hit because I'm, I'm pretty sure a 21 didn't hit last time. 21 does not hit. Um, All right. What I will say is your 26 is definitely going to kill this one, or your 27 is definitely going to kill this one, so you can then turn to the other one behind Eclipse and just roll me damage for that one. Awesome. Yeah, this one's got five hit points left, so I don't think you can do less than that. (laughs) Absolutely not. All right. This second one will take 35 damage. Oof. And that is, again, one that you've already struck before. Uh, yeah. It's not it's not dead, but it's looking pretty bad as well. And At that the is top of the round, it's Tulia. Would um, Tulia already know, or, or is there a knowledge check I can roll to prevent uh, or like see what I can do to to stop Eclipse from you know chowing down? That'd be a. Um, I'd let you do one or the other. Well, actually, I could I could let you do both. Uh, spellcraft to kind of know what's what type of spell effects you might be under, and then a religion. So only 34 on the spellcraft. I still believe that's enough to know she's she's under a dominate-like effect. Like, yeah. But it is not dominate person. It's acting as, as if it were dominate person. Hmm. And then is there any way that should, if I, if I roll religion? Religion, I could... you'll know some other stuff. 29. I rolled an 8 and a 9. Uh, with a 29, you do realize that like this started after you kind of saw that um, that tomb giant go up the stairs. However, I don't believe Tulia can see to the top of the stairs. So at this point, you're not entirely sure if it's like a remaining spell from the tomb giant that you just didn't see her cast, or if she did something up those stairs, like if there is something up those stairs. If you were to move up I'd give you more information, but because you can't see anything up there now, uh, that's your your best guess. All right. Well, Tulia will move her first thirty feet and then decide what to do after that. Okay. Because now well, I now that you see. now that you can see that there's an altar up there, you think because of what you experienced before that the tomb giant likely interacted with the tyrant's whispers to start that haunt up again. Uh, so you think this is a haunt effect. But do I think it's the same haunt effect, like, or the same type of level of haunt effect as, like, the first one that we went into? You do. You think it's the same haunter 
that's well that's what I was trying to understand is this is this like a smaller mini haunt within a haunt or is this a like no I believe what you guys had learned from like your macro level understanding of the this tyrant's whispers haunt is that it could cast kind of any spell uh, up to level nine but you know that it would like it would kind of change its tactics depending on the area of Renchurch you're in and so here it seems to be you know forcing you guys to go eat those those remains in maybe an effort to poison you, sicken you, that kind of thing. Gotcha. Okay. Now, that's not really high enough a check for me to tell you some of the ways to stop it, but you could point that out, and maybe that's something Matume would want to look into when he can see. He's up next. Yeah, she will yell that out, that information out to Matumbe. Uh, she, I mean, well, she's just going to yell it out to Ether because I can't see Matumbe. On the map at all. Just shouting it out to the room. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. I feel like that's what Matuma does every time, so. Yeah. You've, uh, you've still got a standard. And I could continue my move if I needed. Mm-hmm. My spells are looking rough, but I have enough to use um, a, a, a magic missile. And I'm going to use it at the, the guy actually not by the table, but the one kind of in the corner. Okay, so yeah, as you move up, you do see that... Uh, you can recognize him. The one that had fallen into your pit initially has gotten up and and kind of moved to the corner of the room. The mature one. The mature one, yes. So I will cast Magic Missile. 20 damage. Not bad damage. Wait, 15 damage. Uh, oh. Significantly I- less damage. 5-5. Five, five. For some reason, I went, oh, I got 10 on the die double that. That's not how that works. I add one per die, which is five. That is that. All right, it's Matumbe's turn now. Fear not, Tulia. I am on my way. Matumbe is about halfway back through the giant center room of the church where your clergy would, well, not your clergy, your um, your people who go to church, I don't know, congregation. That's who they are, where they would be sitting. Uh, yes, the flock. <laughs> so he is hasted <laughs> like most, if not everybody. Um, so he can cover a pretty good distance. He's straddling a pew right now, but he is going to run up over this big bloody smear that is, you know, something's been dragged through this uh, congregation area. It's going to move 60 feet up, getting him somewhat close to this table. Now I can see Ikmer clips the summon, couple ghouls, Tulia, and this back thing in the room. Mm-hmm. Uh, would now be an appropriate time to roll a religion yep, check. You could roll the religion now. Sweet. Alright, pretty good. 47. Yeah, you think that altar is kind of the locus of the Tyrant's Whispers in this room? Okay. You believe that you could, you could shut the haunt down by applying positive energy to that altar? Got it. Um, now, you know that that's not going to stop the haunt forever. Like it's going to, it's going to keep, you know, showing up around this church. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you end the haunt, it's going to end, end the effect on anybody that's possessed. If not, you think that that effect's probably going to last for a couple minutes. Now, when you say apply positive energy, is that just we got to touch it with positive energy or do a significant amount? <laughs> so your knowledge of haunts is that like, you know, haunts, much like other creatures, yep. have a certain amount of hit points. Now, because the hit, this haunt isn't like killed by you doing positive energy, it's not a ton of positive energy that you'd have to do to kind of get this thing to stop. Mm-hmm. But it, it, it is like... It is enough where, like, it is enough where, like, you'd have... Seed through my ploy. (laughs) Yeah. You could use a Disrupt Undead. You think you'd probably have to use that, like, ten times to... Well, time to get to work. (laughs) So you think, like, stronger positive energy would certainly end this faster. All right, he's going to shout to Uska. Uska! We need you to apply your positive energy to the altar at the forefront of this room so Eclipse will stop gorging on corpses. Is that something you can do? I definitely can. I just have to get up there first. Wonderful. In the meantime, I will dispatch with the ghouls. I probably won't, but uh, he can get up 
to 10 feet away from a ghoul in the back corner. And I do have long arm. So actually, I'm not going to go that close. I'm going to go one step backwards so that it, it has to walk up into my threatened area. All right. Are you, are you thinking about the mature one? Yes. It has a bow out. Oh, son of a bitch. So it won't be walking up. So it won't be walking up. All right. Well, then I'm just going to get closer then. Okay. Hey, is Burst of Radiance a positive energy spell? Because right you did that. Fucking face. It, like, it hurts right there. evil, but I don't oh. think it's positive. No, it's like good damage. No, it's, it's just yeah. damage. It is a good spell, but it's just damage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to get it. Positive pulse, though, a first level spell, can harm haunt if you have that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, it's Air Bear's turn. All right. Air Bear is flying on his broom about... Well, he doesn't see the uh, ghouls in question, but he knows that all the action is up there. Knows that he's going to have to fly all the way up. He's only got 40 feet of movement with the broom. So he's got to fly all the way up. And he was 10 feet up. He's just going to sink down to five to be able to hit the mature ghoul next turn. Having to use two move actions. All right. Eclipse. I need you, you, you're chowing down. Did you make me a fortitude save? Um, is there any specific effect? Disease. 31, I rolled not great. Yep. You're okay, now I need you to make me a reflex save. Or wait, are you flying? Uh, I so was five, five foot up in the air, and then I don't think you had me go all the way down because I could reach the table. You you have a fly speed right now? Yeah. You don't have to. You're right next to the pit. That's why. I, that's why I asked. But if you have a fly speed right now, you're fine. You can't fall in. So I'm fine. Fine. No, you're. You're. You spend your entire turn eating corpses. Oh, dang. I mean, I guess that's. <laughs> that's. You don't take any damage. So if that's fine to you, I guess that's fine. But it's. Uh, you don't fall into a pit. It's middle ground. <laughs> it's middling. It is the mature corpulent ghoul's turn. The uh, the lopper, really quick. The lopper isn't going to do much, but it, he is going to walk up a little bit closer just so he can see a little bit more of the battlefield and also uh, be not at the end of the tether. Okay. But he's too damaged to actually fight. Mm-hmm. So this ghoul's going to back his chubby ass up against these rocks and he's going to fire at Matumbe. All right. What you got? He does have human bane arrows. Did he roll his knowledge check to know that I'm a human? No, but I mean, that, those, <laughs> it's, are the, it's okay. those are the only <laughs> arrows he's equipped with. Um, so actually, I guess technically he does have frost arrows he could switch to. But uh, we're going to we're going to go with a shot off of this. Ooh, um, that probably will. Uh, so let me factor my bane in. It's going to be 37 to hit. Very close, but you got me. Okay. It's going to be 15 points of damage. And that, my friend, is his turn. Because I didn't want to take the rapid shot penalty to try and shoot you. All right. Um, So, Uska, you're up. Uska's all alone in the very far side of the room right now back behind all the pews she is very far away from the altar she can't even see it where she's at right now so she's gonna move up until she can actually see it she has 70 feet of flying movement right now she moves up just before the table and now can see the altar and it is the altar is 40 feet away from her right now which is too far even with her channel So at this point, she stays where she is at and cackles to extend all the protective lux. Okay. It's the Lucky Corpulent Ghoul's turn. He's going to full attack at Eclipse, so I assume Ikmer's going to do his thing. That is correct. For this? Okay. So, Haley, you're going to want to apply the 
the benefit of bodyguard to your AC, which is a is that a plus two? It's actually plus four, plus four. because I've okay. got some special stuff. Okay, so you're gonna have a plus four to your AC. Any hits and damage are coming at Ikmer, though. Correct. And effects. Yes. So I'm gonna attempt to bite. Natural one. And then I'm gonna attempt the two claws. Ooh. Nope, I definitely don't get you. My highest is a 28. No. So, pretty low roller across the board. Bite, claw, claw. Miss, miss, miss. And then um, I'm going to roll a reflex save to see if I fall in the pit. That is a 25. Was my DC. Ugh, you beat it. Okay, so he just kind of like teeters on the edge, but he's fine. Durin, you're way in the back as well. Yeah. Uh, you see all the commotion, pretty much. Way in the back. So he sees Eclipse, you know, kind of get hit. I don't know. But the, can't quite see what hit her. So he takes a step forward, a five-foot step. Now he can see the giant gobbling ghoul behind her. And Ikmer's about to go, and so is Lyra. This guy looks like he's in a pretty bad spot. I don't think I'm going to spend any bombs on this. I think I'm just going to full round with the plus one seeking orc horn bow and throw on some deadly aim to see if I can damage him down. Sure. Because I got to be thrifty with these bombs right now. First shot is a 28. 28 hits. Wonderful. That is going to be... 21 points piercing damage. Okay. Second shot. 25. I don't think does it. 25 actually does meet to be. Oh, wow. Okay. Wonderful. They are that fat. Yeah, they're, they're pretty big. Another uh, 21 points of damage. All right. That one falls. Sweet. I am very glad I didn't use a bomb on that then. And that will be his full turn. All right. We are in the lopper just a bit too far away. Okay. It's going to be Ikmer. Uh, Igmar, I need you to make me a will save. Ooh, all right. This is a mind-affecting effect, if it matters. Of course, I always have to reread his tenacious ability, so I am (laughs) going to roll that now. If it fails, I will use the tenacious. Okay, sounds good. (laughs) Oh, boy. Uh, With a two on the die, I don't even need to ask. Yeah, it's going to fail. I don't know. Uh, does a 23. Don't say anything because <laughs> Uska is within 30 feet of Ikmer and he is doing a saving throw. So Uska boosts that up by two using her tweak the odds. So she's spinning his luck in front of him. So that goes to a 25. Okay. Unfortunately. <laughs> That is not enough. No. Ikmer, you are compelled to eat the tasty snacks on the table. Uh, So in your next turn, you will spend it eating the various body parts on the table and hopefully not getting a disease. I hope not. Lyra, you're up. You cannot see any enemies. Although any of your friends over to the left could tell you there's a ghoul in the corner. Uh, She can see... She can see the altar where she's at, and Matumbe was standing right next to her when he gave that great information to Uska. She has ways of dealing positive energy as well, but would need to be closer. She is hasted and is 55 feet away from the altar, but there is stairs and a table uh, in the way. And you are not flying any at all, right? That's correct. Lyra is just walking. Mm-hmm. Uh, so are the stairs and the table difficult terrain or would climbing over the table? I don't think we've treated the stairs as difficult terrain this entire time. The table, I would allow you to either move over as difficult terrain or if you make an acrobatics, I can see you just kind of like hopping up and running across. All right. Acrobatics isn't great, but uh, she does have the boots of striding and springing that give you a plus five competence bonus on acrobatics checks for jumps, which I feel like that's kind of jumping on top of a table. That's fair. Yeah, I'll allow that. I will give that a go to see if she can get uh, get on over there. All right. 
That is a 24. Yeah, 24. You're good to go. Um, You actually make the jump from the stairs at about level with the table. Uh, So it's just a short jump over to the table. You land and run across and then jump back to a part of the stairs that's raised up and make it up there in 60 feet. Awesome. Lyra is looking so elegant as she crosses over all of this blood and gore, reaching this horrific altar. She heard Matumbe's instructions. So as she's running, she's charging up a cure serious wounds into her hand. So she uses that forward momentum to pump it into this altar as she runs up to it. Let's go. Yes. Uh, So... Uh, I'm going to need a will save for the haunt. (laughs) Sure. That always feels weird. Yeah. (laughs) It does feel weird. It always is weird because, like, it's not like they really give them those. Well, as you run across this table, Ikmer's going to say, well, I was eating that. (laughs) (laughs) 27. Well, I'm trying to look up my DCs right now. Is Ikmer in his, like, hybrid wolf form? Yes. Oh, so he got, like, blood all over his snout and shit? Yeah. I imagine he Ugh. pretty much always is at this point for the sweet, sweet DR. 100%. <laughs> yeah, I think so. He has yeah. been for a long time now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that definitely succeeds, so it's only going to take half damage. Okay. So Max would have been 32 points of damage, so it takes 16. 16. All right. Ikmer, you're chowing down. Mm-hmm. Make me a fortitude save. Oh, much better. With an 18 on the die, brings it to 37. It's like you've been eating humanoids your whole life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he finds that just a little, some some sort of substance. It's it's a little fresher than the, than the rest. Says, for a moment, for a moment, your brain hurts because you're getting the... Uh, Kuru or whatever, but, but then you're good. <laughs> All right, Tulia. Man, I almost don't want to go back to beer after that smoochie. It's hard. <laughs> I'm still thinking about it. There's three more in the fridge. Oof. I imagine not for long. When I tell you I don't have a lot of options left, boy, do I mean it. Boy, howdy. Boy, howdy. Are you out of spells, or you just don't want to use your good spells on this stupid ghoul? Uh, yeah, the only spells I've got left are, um, not going to be helpful in this situation, or are too high level for me to feel like it's worth it. That's fine. I was just making sure you weren't, like, out of spells for the day, because that's not going to be good. Well, so what I did do, uh, t- t- because I wasn't 100% sure what I was looking for, is I do have, um a few spells left to like like oh, after this slots. I'll, I'll yeah. re-prepare yeah. for some spells you got a crossbow I do and that is what I'm gonna be pulling out which is my uh, plus one dark wood longbow oh yeah you're an elf you can use a longbow that would be correct and I am going to shoot at this thing here the mature roll high I gotta <laughs> <laughs> you do everyone else has to roll like a Six. 16 plus 16 is 32. Yeah. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Yeah, that's fine. You have plus 16 to hit? It says so. There's Dang. There's no way. Well, I guess plus dex, right? So your BAB is six. Correct. So six plus, plus dex three is, is dex. seven, eight, nine. Uh, does haste give you bonuses? Ten. Uh, and then 11 because it's plus one from your weapon. Plus one for my weapon. Oh, is Inspire Courage on or no? Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's plus three. So plus 14. Okay. Favorite enemy? Yep. Yeah, that would do it. Favorite enemy undead. And we've yep. had that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's why is. I have a plus 16. Yeah, we All right. figured it out. Like, that does not seem right for the wizard. Hey. Stack those buffs. <laughs> yeah. Make anything happen. <laughs> yes, that hits. Uh, let's get that 1d8 plus... One damage or whatever. Plus six. Woohoo. <laughs> because of all of the bonuses. Yeah. Ten. Ten damage. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's damage, man. 
And I had to pull it out this round, so I don't think I can hit anything else. And that's that. Yeah, I was also pretty impressed with my mm. bonus. And that's why instead of doing some other sort of desperate thing, I figured the bow might be OK. Yeah, no. it's okay. <laughs> All right, this big boy is backed up into a corner. Matumbe takes a five foot step and says, you have consumed your last corpse, my corpulent friends. And he's going to uh, start swinging with this book. At this point, a natural one will miss. The first hit is a natural four, which does hit at a 31 with all the bonuses and stuff. Let me see if I'm destroyed. I'm not destroyed. 33 points of damage. All right. Second attack. I feel like these guys are so fat, they should be immune to bludgeoning or resist (laughs) bludgeoning, but they're not. No, I'm just pounding it into them. Uh, Three on the dice. Again, going to go higher than 21. 25. 25. I don't know why I said 21. That's not right. We're all doing dubious math today. Yeah, lots of dubious math on the board. <laughs> You're just telling me you hit versus an AC that's <laughs> not as AC. Haley's over there with her plus 16 wizards. 27 points of damage. All right, that kills it. All right, so you've wiped out the final ghoul. Yes. Sweet. However, this haunt is still in effect. But I believe with a five-foot step and two attacks, that's Matumbe's turn. Correct. So, Erber, you're up. There is not much that I can do for the positive energy. And just kind of shrugs his, shrugs his shoulders. I want Erber to be like, oh no, I failed my save. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. Yeah. laughs> just, yeah, he uses the broom, flies, just like skids through the whole entire table with his mouth open just <laughs> housing anything that comes near hey, if you want to do that for your turn I'll give uh, give the other ones a, a plus one to their save <laughs> okay, I'll give them a resave they have to like go in search of meat now because their bear just scooped it all up oh absolutely that's what he does <laughs> and at the very end of the table he, he just Batman's the table <laughs> yep at the very end of the table, he he sees the chairs. He gives them an eye, and the and the legs on the chairs, and then looks back to the table and, and sees better better choices on the menu. Oh man, yeah, Air Bear looks like a kid after you took him to a rib joint. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's such an image. That's such a distinct image. Yep. Mommy, clean me up. Needs a bib. <laughs> All right. Uska, Lyra, hurry! It's affecting more and more of us. <laughs> All right, Eclipse, I'll, I'll let you make a will save at a plus one. Mind affecting? It is mind affecting, yes. If you have any bonuses <laughs> against haunt effects, it's a haunt effect. You're the only one that I thought of that might have that. But. I do not. I do have her shadows. Uh, ch- charm or fear, probably not. So, 20, 25. 25 doesn't do it. So, Eclipse just like uses her move action to get to the other side of the table to find a fresh, I just fresh body and starts chowing slow, down. Again. I like just slowly fly over the table to go to the other side. Yeah. Um, make me another fortitude save. Are you carrying a heavy load now? Yeah, you're encumbered now. It's possibly. 28. 28. You're good. <laughs> it sucks because the people with the. The lowest will save to get compelled by this also have the highest fortitude to save, so <laughs> they're not going to get as dizzy. Well, what also sucks is Eclipse purposefully has kept a ton of her positive energy stuff in prep for this. Can't do anything. Like, I have so many here series and all of my, like, conjuration. No dice. Uska. All right. Uska is within range, and she is flying, so she moves up, flies up, over the table right next to Lyra, and she is going to pump a Cure Sirius into the altar. So I need another will save. Will save from the altar of all things. Oh, 18 on the die is not gonna happen. Ooh, okay. But I'll take half. All right, this time the max or the full damage would have been 23, so that's 11. 11, perfect. So we're looking at 37 damage total. Or sorry, 27 damage total, right? 16 and 11. Mm-hmm. 
during your up your way back there. Yeah, way back there, and lots of or he can put out lots and lots of good damage, but he can't put out lots and lots of positive and uh, damage. So he's just going to kind of move up to the rest of the group. He's going to double move, going 80 feet. And I guess isn't even really that close to the rest of the group. But he gets up in the business. And what's going on? Uh, that's really it. Okay. Lyra, I need you to make me a will save. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This is a mind-affecting effect. Uh. Compulsion, if it matters. The, I do have some bonuses, but nothing to that effect. Okay. Oh, give me one second. <laughs> All right. I rolled horribly. So oh, no. <laughs> Lyra is going to, as a immediate action, she is going to borrow fortune. So I can re-roll this roll, but for the next two rounds after casting the spell... I have to roll twice and take the worst result. But I get to roll twice okay. next. Okay. All right. Wow, 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 wow. I wonder who I will be targeted next turn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really hoping it doesn't uh, last that long. I think it was maybe worth it because with the re-roll, that is a, hopefully, with a 29, I'm safe. You feel, uh, you feel hungry for a moment, but... Uh... You shake it off. <laughs> and it is your turn now. With that pull, Lyra was looking over her shoulder at the table and she sees the Berlani just floating over the table and she calls to it, we really need your help. Focus your positive energy here. And she points to the altar. Um, and then she is going to cast a Cure Sirius. I need another will save. Okay. It's not going to do. That's a uh, 32. Ooh, okay. All right. Uh, that is going to be another 16 damage, and that's the halved already. And then the Berlani is going to fly up to the altar as well. And it does have two castings of Cure Serious Wounds, but unfortunately, it is in its wind form right now. Ooh. Oh, but it's it can do spell-like abilities in either form but this is not, doesn't say that the Cure Serious is a spell-like ability, so it's going to have to take its standard to turn back into... What are its spell-likes? What was that? What are its spell-likes? Does it have, like, casting as a class and then spell-like abilities um, as well? You know, Usually actually, with mod... None of them. It has several spells at will, and then it has Cure Serious only two per day. Yeah, those are spell-likes. Oh, so it can cast it. For when, it, when a monster has has spells like that that aren't tied to like class levels, those are spell like abilities. Sweet. Okay, it stays at us as a swirling wind, and it is going to cast cure serious wounds. All right, another. I mean, I'm sure you're going to pass this will save. Yeah, Twenty nine. Yeah. It's possible I don't. I'm just I've been rolling kind of hot on these. I mean, it has a good save, don't get me wrong, but it's not unbeatable. Well, and the Brolani is a lot lower caster level. Yeah. Uh, nine points of damage, and that's halved already. The whispers go quiet. <gasps> oh. Yes. And uh, your friends kind of look up from the table, horrified, uh, mouths full of half-chewed people. And Eclipse starts spitting it out. ASAP and gagging and then uh, she would eventually compose herself. Quick! Lyra! One more burst! Air bear is still affected! <laughs> <laughs> As I say, she'd compose herself and say, Ikmer, Air bear, I can't believe you both got affected by that. It's so gross! <laughs> Zip was awful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we've all come to our senses now. But if there are some extra positive energies going around, I, I certainly wouldn't mind. And Lyra calls over to the Berlani before it disappears. Before you go, friend, please spare us. Give us your help. We could use your positive energy. Uh, it does still have one more casting of Cure Serious, so it will use Who, that. me? 
my positive energy? Hmm, I was going to take that back to Elysium. <laughs> oh no, do I have to uh, use the diplomacy? No, no, it's fine, it's fine. Go ahead and impose. It's fine. <laughs> we will be indebted to you forever. Thank you for oh, your of kindness. Of course, of course, forever, forever, for, for 30 more seconds, whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> I will never forget you. That's what everyone who summons me says. I haven't seen one twice. Uh, that's, would it be like... Never mind, don't, I'm not going to finish that question. A 16. Speak up. <laughs> 16 for Ikmer. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, if that hunger thing worked, would it be horrific to, like, eat a summons? Because don't they just, like, go back and they're fine? Can you eat a summon? No. But it's But it's real and physical. Yeah, but it, like... Just as it disappears, so do the pieces of it that you just consumed. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so I think the answer is yes, you could. You'd, you'd but be then, temporarily like, satisfied. Yeah, it'd <laughs> disappear out of your stomach in a few seconds. I was more worried about that. Like That's hunger. one way to lose weight. You know, yeah. if you summon everything you eat, you know, you're. Bulk and cut, baby. <laughs> you're, eat summons. You're full. You're temporarily full and satisfied, but then, you know, all those empty calories disappear. Mm hmm. Well. I think you guys have a decent amount of healing to do, and yeah. now that combat has waned, I feel like you guys can actually do a little bit of kind of exploration of the area as well, you know, without probably pressing further in. You do know that now that the, the whispers have quieted and the gnawing has stopped, it seems empty for now. So we are behind enemy lines. This is a very scary situation. I'm very interested in exploring and learning a whole bunch of new stuff. Can we just record scratch here, say that we spent a bunch of time healing and then started it? We all are down a shit ton of healing. Yeah, it's going to yeah. take like half an hour to do that. Can we just do that off air? Yep. Okay. Yep. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Uh, also, as much as Tulia might want to explore, she needs to spend... So she's not down a ton. She's only down 21. So, But she needs to spend time preparing the rest of her spells. Because uh, I'm almost out. So uh, that uh, takes any, uh, that don't takes a maximum of like 15 minutes for me. So that's not a big deal. I'll do that while we're yeah, that's not bad healing. Um, and then she'll want to look at all the items on these other things. <laughs> okay, so you guys spend some time healing. You know, Tulia spent some time figuring out her spells. Where do you want to start? Do you want to start with the bodies? Do you want to start with um, some of the rooms in this area? Walk me through your process. Matume wants to start at the altar that we just okay. pumped full of positive energy. All right, so you're checking this altar out. Yes. And you see that it's still kind of smoldering with these gray fumes, and um, there's, like, stacked offerings on it. Looks like most of them are, like, bloody skulls or, um, or even, like, broken scythe blades. I'd let you make me a religion check here. Let's do that. Uh, Tulia and Eclipse can auto aid you. That would be lovely. Thank you. 39. Is that with the aids? That is, you know what? Durin also auto aids. 41. Okay. You know that this is giving off a desecration aura, mm -hmm. a strong desecration aura. You think it was powering many of the creatures in this apps. So like in, in this big area in front of you, this choir and, and the seating area and through all the pews, you think that aura was, is maybe affecting, you know, from here forward of the first floor. What you learn is interesting. You learn that the, the tyrant's haunt, you start to think can be, can be channeled through any area with desecrate by a creature. So like, one of your enemies, if there's like an altar or something emitting a desecration aura, can activate that aura to almost call the tyrant's whispers haunt into the fight. Okay, so if we're up against a group of people and one of them makes a break for something, it's in our best interest to stop that person as quick yeah. as possible. Yeah, and not um, gather around. Further, you know, if you can pinpoint that spot and get to it before they do and cast Consecrate on it, it will remove the tyrant's ability to be channeled from that spot for the duration of the consecrate. Okay. Now, I, I believe consecrate takes some time. 
So that might be something where, like, if you can get to an area undetected, confirm that that's a desecration spot and consecrate it, be good for you. But I'd have to look at the spell and see if it's... I can't remember if consecrate is, like... I did it in Rune Lords, like, six years ago. I think it takes a while. It's actually only one action. It's in one action. If I'm looking at the correct spell, it's a... Consecrate. Yeah, there's only one. Really? Wow. You do need holy water and 25 gold worth of silver dust. It lasts a long time. Yeah, it lasts a long time. Great. Well, if that's what we learned from the altar, before we really explore, we should probably check out these bodies, see what they got, if anything. Yes, Tulia has much interest in the bodies. She also would like to know if you guys uh, want to rest or if she should prep a different spell. Do we really have the option to rest? I don't feel like we do. Because of time or because of location? Uh, Because of location. I feel like this area, we're just going to keep getting hit with haunts. So that's that's why uh, I picked up a very silly spell that Steve made fun of me for a whole bunch. (laughs) You'll have to refresh my memory. Mage's Magnificent Mansion. Uh, Yes, I did make fun of you for this. Yes, you did. (laughs) But it lasts two hours per level and it creates an extra dimensional mansion. Uh has a single entrance on the plane from which spells cast. Entry point looks like a faint shimmering air that's four foot wide and eight feet high. Only those I designate can enter the mansion and the portal is shut and made invisible behind you when you enter. You can only open it again from your own side at will. Once observers have passed beyond the entrance, they are in a magnificent foyer with numerous chambers beyond. The atmosphere is clean, fresh, and warm. You can create any floor plan you desire to the limit of the spell's effect. The place is furnished and contains sufficient foodstuffs to serve a nine-course banquet to a dozen people per caster level. Staff of near-transparent servants, as many as two per caster level, uh, are obedient and wait upon all who in- enter. It's, um, since pal- palace can only be entered through a special porter out- portal, outside conditions do not affect the mansion, nor do conditions inside it pass beyond the plane. Hmm. I got made fun of for it. <laughs> Yeah, Steve, that sounds like a great idea right about now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, it was also it, it, prese- is, it is it is a level seven spell. It was also presented to me like this is such a fun jokey spell I got. And I was like, it is. Ah, that's goofy. Look, we could all have our own room. <laughs> is that just a like what what are the tags on that spell? Conjuration creation. Conjuration creation. Okay. Yeah, as long as it doesn't have any teleportation on it. You think no, you'd probably be safe. Shockingly, it doesn't. And once everything's closed and locked up, it, it goes goes away. So, yeah, uh, you know, there is time pressure, you know, okay. but that's certainly like a we really need to rest. Let's burn this and, and do it. Thing, it's it is a level seven spell. So it's a I cast this because we're going to rest mm-hmm. right now. I left one level sal- spell seven spell open in case of a situation like this. My other one is stuck on limited wish because that's going to be the thing that saves someone who's dying. If I use that and then we plan to go into another combat instead of resting, I'd probably want to prep limited wish again, right? So it's uh, just something I want to throw out there because it's it's kind of a like, do we do it now? Do we do we hope for the next one type of thing? So Yeah, right now I think it's we hope the people deeper in here don't know that we're here. Because if they do, and you rest for eight hours, this place is going to be empty when you leave. Like, when you leave your thing. Exactly. Um, so keep that in mind. You don't have a ton of reason to think that you've been, like, found out. Because you've killed pretty much everything that you've come across. But by the same token... None of us have true scene, so... <laughs> right. Well... None of you have true seeing. None of you know exactly how right. intelligent this haunt is. So... Those are just caveats that I'll put out there, but I do think that's a that's a way better option than let's try and find a safe spot like in this place to sleep. Mm-hmm. Yes. Did I pick it because I felt like it was a silly mansion where we all could have our own weird rooms? Yeah, but it's actually a very seriously helpful thing. <laughs> all right. So you guys are checking these bodies. Each of the ghouls has a... Um, Plus one adaptive composite short bow with, uh, at this point, we're going to say um, in total, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten human bane arrows, 
and 12 frost arrows. Um, they all are also wearing plus one leather armor, and they each have a plus one agile amulet of mighty fists equipped. The uh, juju zombies were each carrying plus two butchering axes, and that's all. That's all that's special. I mean, they have like mundane armor, mundane leather armor that's huge. So, <laughs> um, the tomb giant, I'm going to give this to you because you've kind of seen this before. Uh, this is a plus two keen scythe, is the scythe it's wielding, um, masterwork breastplate, and then this um, blue stone that, Tulia, I don't even need a check because you've recognized one of these before. This is a stone of good luck or a luck stone. I think I have one of those. What does it do? This grants its possessor a plus one luck bonus on saving throws, ability checks, and skill checks, which luck bonus is a bonus not many of you have. Correct. That's good for anything. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, just kidding. You told me I had to give it back because that was, uh, right? Isn't that the one? Oh, no, stone of good luck. I couldn't remember if that was one of the key things. It was. That so I had the to Chaos give it back. Orb and the Orb of um, Storms. Oh, okay. We don't give those back. Yeah. You were supposed to. And then you started using the Chaos Orb, and I was like, oh, okay. I didn't know that I was giving that back. I think that's the only one because I did uncheck the Stone of Good Luck. Oopsies. Does Lyra still have the Orb of Storms? It's still on my sheet, but I haven't used anything from it. You know what? I don't think you had to. It's fine. You can keep them because uh, I don't think it's not like you had to like you had the standoff with Nana. You didn't have to give them back to the dragon or anything. The dragon right, was dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. True, true, true. Oh, nice. Very, very kind of you. Mm-hmm. Sorry for kind of breaking the rules. Didn't realize. Yeah, it's OK. Just you know, take your free 60,000 gold items and go. So who wants the other luck stone? <laughs> so mild push for Uska to have it because she has fates favored and whenever you are under the bonus whenever you have a luck bonus of any kind that bonus increases by one so it would double the bonus I vote for Uska Uska. (laughs) and yes that means all of Uska's skills go up by two all of Uska's saves go up by two I want this very bad from a two man turn but it it just makes too much sense for Uska this is what it's for That's all yours, yeah. Especially for somebody that we need to save when it really, really counts. Wow, that's awesome that you can take that obscure bonus and bump it up. And use it. Like, we just make it useful. Don't get luck bonuses that much. Mm -mm. Right, right. Yeah. Fate's favorite is great for like folks that play like a self buffing divine caster because a lot of times you'll, you'll take like divine favor. That's like a level one spell, and you get to add an extra plus one to that attack roll and stuff. And that's what I always do when I'm like a when I'm playing like a war priest or a inquisitor or something. I'll take that. But yeah, cool item there. Are you guys kind of making your way around the rooms? I mean, there's a lot of like little offshoots and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say anything that we can peek our head into, we should peek our head into. But you know, if we need to. Go up and down stairs or open doors or something. That's a larger conversation. I yeah, I mean, I think most of the stuff is open mm-hmm. from the apps here. So you can see, like, you guys can already see to your south, there's, like, a a singular, like, throne-looking chair. It looks rather mundane, but then there's a path that leads further in to Renchurch. You probably don't want to go that way if you're not looking for a fight yet. However... There is kind of a crumbled corner to the north where you backed that last ghoul into. There is a, you know, as you kind of walk in, walk around, you can peek into these things. There's what looks like a baptistry. So you look up there, you see a baptistry, which has, even from this distance, you can tell like the water is like profane. You know, it's, it's like, it's unholy water in essence. Okay. If you continue without going in there, uh, you would see that that blood trail leads to where the tomb giant and those juju zombies were working. There's a kind of like not quite an altar, but more like a slab there that might bear further investigation. There's there's in fact like a body there 
All right, let's slab it up. Yeah. All right. Matumbe, as you approach, I want you to make me a knowledge local check. Oh, okay. Sure. Some action here. Bear Bear could eat. Could he? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, auto. You said local? Yeah. Auto aid from Tulia. Um, I'm going to say only the original party can aid on this. Oh. Only the original party. Oh, no. Is it who we think it is? Or who I might think it is? I don't think Ikmer has that knowledge. Uh, surprise, surprise. Eclipse Lyra. Absolutely not. Nope. No, Lyra does not nope. have knowledge local. All right. 37 it is then. This corpse looks just like Kendra. Mm. However, as kind of your heart drops for a second, you do scan the room and you see there are several slumped corpses that look like Kendra. Oh. What? Oh. And then, That's because of that ability. And then you remember back to the Tomb Giant special ability to stitch corpse. Oh. And create an uncanny undead duplicate of somebody. So hmm. they must yeah. really like if there's a lot of her specifically, she's like she's important. She definitely well, is important. We, we do know that, Brooks. We but the, but what this I think means means that either she was here, she is here, or the tomb giant at some point was in contact with her. And I guess that last one is not necessarily mutually exclusive. Yeah, you know yeah. for a fact the Tomb Giant would have had to see her right. to be able to do this. Especially with such an yeah. uncanny copy. Ikma, Lyra Eclipse, look. Look at what this Tomb Giant has done. It kept trying to copy Kendra. For what purpose, I'm not sure. Maybe to, I don't know, try to recreate this carrion crown formula without killing her? I don't know. This is beyond me at this point, but it is worrying to be sure. Then if I follow this blood trail correctly, does that mean we were eating oh gosh? Uh, well they'd be fake Kendras. Like fake ones, not real ones, if that's what we were eating. I love where Hickmer's at <laughs> immediately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matumbe, I'm going to say you're intelligent enough to intuit what you, Steve, may not have in this moment, which is that if Kendra is important and if you can create exact duplicates, mm -hmm. they're probably using them to hide her. It's a Harry Potter situation. Mm. It's very much a Harry Potter situation. Yeah. Everybody takes the Polyjuice Poly juice potion and everybody looks just like Harry. It's that you think you think that's certainly a, a big possibility that whatever is happening, like they, they expect somebody to be coming. Like they expect somebody's coming for her. And that might that might just be a Divian knowing that you guys are on his trail mm -hmm. and being hyper careful. Mm. So we need to be able to relay that supposition to the rest of the party. Be careful if we see a Kendra in the future. She may not be who she appears to be. If we do see Kendra in the future, we should ask her a question that only the true Kendra would know. That way we can figure out if she is a duplicate or if it's really her. That's a good idea. Does anyone else think it's a little weird that they killed so many of the duplicates or are they just like, uh, like or that they made so many corpses that look like this though? So these look like they might have been practice. Ah. Mm. So they're like Kendra, but she has like extra freckles. Yeah, like the, the one on the slab <laughs> is like almost perfect, right? Got these it. ones that are like kind of laying on the ground, it's like, okay, Kendra's not a brunette. Like, okay, Kendra doesn't have green eyes. Oh, that's, yada, yada, yada. that's a kind of, that's cool. Like a cool image for sure. Lyra, what were you thinking? What could we ask her? Hmm. Well, didn't you have like a library date with her, Matumbe? It's been some time. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps I did. We'll have to. I'll ask her a question <laughs> about that. It sounds like maybe you don't know, but maybe maybe Lyra has a better uh, question. I, I recall I have a, quite a good memory. Don't worry <laughs> about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but but if perhaps we wanted to. 
further confirm her identity. Lyra, did you have something? I didn't have an exact question in mind. I think if we can get her talking about when we first met and our our journey together, that maybe we'll be able to, to figure out if she's lying or even come up with a fake story that the real Kendra wouldn't know. You know, uh, I can actually think of a couple. Uh, we can ask her who I thought the pretty lady was. Um, but also, I mean, to we can ask her where Matumbe and I went for drinks when we visited her. Um, but like, it's not a big town. I, that's true. And also, uh... Then who the bartender was? Again, not... It, it was, I'm pretty sure, his pub? Not... Big, I don't know. Like, that might work, but it also might be obvious. One thing oh. you guys would realize as you're kind of, like, going back and forth here is that you'd have to think of a detail that a Divian wasn't present for. Mm-hmm. Well, That's what I'm worried about. Well, I, I also don't know that that... Why would a Divian tell a clone, hey, if someone asks you about where they went for drinks, tell them that Zokar was the bartender. Like, I don't think that's a bad one, actually. And she would definitely like, He know. might know that we know what he, like, why would he tell a clone that specific detail? Because he might be the one controlling that's, all of That's the what I was, what, what I was worried oh, about like is if the he's hive like mind shit. them around, sure, sure. I'm worried about hive mind shit, so that's where it might be good to do a, a story that seems real that's not actually real. Like, I liked that idea from Emily. Yeah, we give a, a fake story that someone just trying to go along with it would say, oh, yeah, of course, I remember that. But the real Kendra would know is not true. Yeah. Yeah, like, Matumbe, you, you would remember that, like, you know, the detail you told her in confidence was that you were the one that killed her father's friend in the Mwangi. Yeah. yeah. Like that was something that happened only between the two of you. Stuff that happened while she was like the only one in the house was like, what did the crow say when we let it in the window? Like that kind of stuff. Like she was awake and there, or even just like <laughs> what kept waking us up in the, you know, in the house or whatever. Sure. Like that kind of stuff, that kind of stuff. You, you guys had like a so- month with like just her, that I think you could you could leave out like bigger town details. You have enough like stuff that you could that you shared with her that was just you know the five of you that I think it would be pretty easy to kind of figure out. Okay, so we got it covered. Yeah, yeah. I vote a really good fake story that didn't actually happen unless there's something we don't know. Would be that uh, she was so nice to Igmar and Igmar tried to kiss her. <laughs> I like pretty that. believable. Pretty believable. <laughs> believable. I feel like that's believable, <laughs> but didn't happen at all. So it's like if she went along with that, that's a fake. That's a fake Kendra. Absolutely. <laughs> Can't say no to that. All right. Well, do we have anywhere else to explore in this area? It looks like the big carve outs we've been in. Is what in those big carve outs? You see that there appears to be another would-be carve-out as you walk uh, back towards the entrance. But again, a lot of this building has collapsed over time. And then just like in the front entrance, you do recognize that there's a door that you guys hadn't hadn't explored up there. Whether you want to or not is, is up to you, but you're not hearing like the sounds of a creature or something in there, so... Ooh. You think with like the sounds of combat, something probably would have come out of there. And then there was what a hall, hall, hallway, maybe down below. Or yes, there's a hallway kind of to the south that you can see down once you, like Eclipse, can start to see down when she's and, over towards and the. You know chair. what? As soon as I get that far, I do stop because those are heads. There are heads. Uh oh. Everywhere. I noticed that detail. I I thought it was cool. And I'm pretty sure that that chair has like a specific name in the church where the priest sits while there's like readings being done, but I don't know what it's called. Got a special name. It's not in the book, so I don't know it. God, there's a lot of variation. It's in the uh, the church's acid tree. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, so we were checking out this head area. Should we should we get rid of this closed door first? Just clean it out. And is this after we've healed and had the chance to yeah, repair? Yeah, that's what we're gonna see. Okay, we're gonna see you guys have healed, and if those of you with empty spell slots wanted to throw a couple spells into those, you can you can do that. We'll see. So you took like a you know half an hour to heal and prepare spells. You'd need like a half hour as, as Uska, right, Emily? I think you prepare spells at like a spell every 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit, it is a bit longer. Because I know Haley with Tulia could do it really fast because of the exploiter wizard thing. She uh, could do it like a minute per spell or a minute per spell level or something. Yeah, I, I I would have to look up the exact time, but I think it's like 15 or so minutes. Yeah. Tell you what, let's do this closed door with literally no downside because Durin is going to walk up and he's actually wearing these fingerless like brown dark leather gloves that I've had since character creation he's going to crack his knuckles in them and place both palms on the door these are the gloves of reconnaissance once per day I can see through five feet or less thick of solid material so I'm seeing through this damn door sure when you look through it, it looks like it's a like a bell tower, mm-hmm. although the bell has since crashed and is sitting in the center of the room. You immediately feel a chill okay, just seeing the bell, and you realize that like that feels kind of similar to the haunts that have been going on here. Maybe just best leave it. Yeah. I, I can see through this door for just a moment. Seems it goes up to the bell tower, but there's nothing but the bad energy on the other side. There's nothing for us here. All right, so y'all, I could get us a whole invisibility sphere, sphere if we want to explore a little bit undercover for a bit, but I, I don't know what kind of combat we're going to be going into, if if any. So I guess that's my... The option is invisibility sphere, or I could do probably another heroism. I feel like those are the two best buffs because the heroism is going to go soon. That should be going off soon. Oh, one thing... Lyra could do... Oh, no, it's 10 minutes per level. 10 minutes per level. We'll be fine. I could give it to someone else, though. <laughs> Not just Dickmer. Lyra does have enough spell slots to cast Death Ward on all but one party member if we want that again going forward. But I think Durin can cast it on himself. That is true. Let me make sure I still have one of those in the tank, and I absolutely do. Perfect. Actually, I got two in the tank, so you know what? Yeah, if you want to leave him off and re-up it on everybody else, that works totally fine. I feel like we'll want that going forward, and if we wait until something happens, then it would take too long for Lyra to cast it all on everyone. Absolutely agreed. So then other, like, big buffs or, like, long-lasting buffs that I could potentially do... Uh, besides invisibility sphere, I could also prep and cast stone skin communal, but I'm I, I would need I would need some some amount of gold. <laughs> so hmm. now I wouldn't need to cast that on Eclipse or Ikmer because they already have it. If I remember correctly, Ikmer might have been the Ikmer. I thought I cast it during the lesser death fight. I could be wrong, or right before lesser death. I could be misremembering them. I mean, if he has it on his sheet, then he has it. I do not have it on my sheet. And he doesn't have it. Right. That I misremembered. But I wouldn't need to cast that on Eclipse. I could do Stone Skin Communal for everyone but Eclipse if you guys want to do that. How long does... How much gold are we talking? It is 250 per person. I could probably help front some of it, but it's 250 gold per person for Stone Skin. Matsumba has 1,700 in the can, so... Right. Yep. 1,000 to be covered. Uh, Air Bear, 600 yes. for Nickmer. And I can spot people because I, I saved multiple thousands because I knew I had this and I knew not everybody would be like cropping that. Uh, how long does this one last? So it's 10 minutes per level split among the recipients and I can cast it as a 15, like level 15 spell. So 150 minutes divided by us, which would be what, seven of us? There's eight if you put it on everyone. Well, a cl- Eclipse already has it. So then seven. For sure. It's been on her sheet. Good. Yeah. I mean. All right. So you got Death Ward for 10 minutes. And you got, or 10-ish minutes. Is it 13 minutes? Yeah, it'd be minute 13 below. minutes. And then I think we'll just then, go fast, I think would be the best bet. 
and then like two, a, a little over 20 minutes for everyone on the stone skin funeral. Oh, that's not 130 minutes per. That's 20 minutes total. It's 150 total split among the recipients. Gotcha. That's why I'm kind of wondering like, now, later, it's a level five spell. Oh, uh, you guys better get in marching order then. Again, do we want to do this now? If we're going to keep going, we should. Yep. Okay. Like, yep. Durin is going to use an invisibility on himself, though, with his fancy invisibility stuff. But I'm notably not using a mutagen because as great as that is, the hit to will saves is pretty tough for me. Maybe later. All right. I assume you healed the, the lopper up with that time, too. Oh, yeah. Possible. Okay. And a shield spell. Line yourselves up. Oh, as we walk and can, or I guess, can see this hallway now, it, it's, there's not just a couple of heads. It's, it's lined on both sides with just heads. Yeah, you see dozens of decapitated human heads uh, preserved as crudely mounted trophies that adorn the walls of this 15 foot wide hallway. Now, Ikmer, you can see at the end of the hallway, it looks like there's a door to the right. That's as far as you can see. Duran, you can actually see to the end of the hallway. Mm -hmm. You see that there are heads at the end of the hallway as well, but it looks like the hallway hangs left. You can't see any further than that. It turns down there, but I don't know where it goes. I can't see any further. Tume is going to throw a detect magic and a detect evil down this corridor. See what we get. Have you done those in Harrowstone yet? Or in... Yeah, six books ago. Not, not Harrowstone in, uh, in Renchurch yet. Uh, actually, no, I don't think yeah, so. Uh, it just pops off everywhere. It, yeah, it like burns your retinas. Okay, then nothing about that. The same will happen if you detect undead. Well, I'm not going to do that because that's a spell salon on a camera. Can we just <laughs> do a general perception if we hear something? Yep. 37 for Uska. 28 for Air Bear. 51 for Matumbe. 25 Eclipse, 31 uh, Tulia. Uh, Matumbe, you're the only one that can hear very muffled, like a potentially a conversation happening off to the right here. Oh. Presumably coming from that room that's down the hall. There's a little doorway. Yeah. It appears that there's someone or some things through that door. They are conversing. They may not know we're here yet. Ripe for an ambush, if I may say so. All right, let's go down this hallway. Mm -hmm. You sneaking? Or are you just kind of lumbering now that you know someone's down there? Those of you that are still flying can, you know, you don't really have to make a sound with your footsteps. Obviously, you just kind of float forward. And, you know, you're kind of focusing on this door, but I do need perception checks all around. 31 Eclipse, 37 Tulia, and then the Lapper got a whopping 16. Okay. Matumbe is a 53, and Durin is a flirty 40. Lyra is a 17, and Uska is a 34. Well, uh, Ikmer just barely breaks 10 with 11. <laughs> Maybe a little... Well done, uh, King. <laughs> a little bit uh, different than that 53. Air Bear has a 23. Okay. Those of you above a 35, as you walk down this hall, notice sporadically uh, some of these heads, like, gasp for air. Eclipse, although you don't see the heads do it, about 20 feet into this hallway, you start to feel short of breath. Those who rolled above a 35 can act in the per surprise round for this haunt, as can Eclipse because she has that special ability. We're going to roll for initiative here. Okay. Matumbe is a 14. Dern's an 11. And Eclipse is a 7, and Tulia is a uh, 28. No, 27. Uska is a 29, and Lyra is an 11. Ikmer got 6. Bear Bear got 31. As you walk down this hallway, and those of you who, that are very perceptive are starting to see um, these heads start to gasp as if they're not attached to their lungs because they're not. They're heads. However, 
Erbear didn't perceive it. Uska didn't perceive it. And so the first to act in the surprise round is Tulia. Tulia, this is a surprise round. So standard action or move action. I mean, like, is anything happening to me? No, you know the haunt is, is going to activate. That's how haunts work. They operate off of a certain initiative. Yeah, there's just, like, nothing I can do to a haunt, so... You have a knowledge of religion check to know more? I do. Uh, yeah, I do. It's, it's not great, but yes. Worth a shot. Natural one, 21. You're not sure what this could be? Yeah, I mean, if I know it's a haunt, there's not... There's nothing, like, combative that I can do. The other haunts, we had to get out of the area or wait it out, so... I could, I could back out of the hallway. Honestly, probably your best bet at this point. If we just don't know anything, I would just get out of there. And walk 30 feet away from the party. Okay. Mitsumba, you also recognized it. Great. Uh, Then I will be doing my knowledge check. There we go. 46. 46. You think if you were to, uh, beyond positive energy, you think you could burn these heads? And it would stop the haunt. Is that like all the heads or a chunk of them? You'd think like fireworks kind of like positive energy damage to the to the heads. Sure. And then the heads would be the focus of the positive energy if we wanted to. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Fire will work just as good as positive energy on these heads. Um, do I channel smites on these things and just smack the wall? Maybe I'd do that. I only have three channel smites left. Screw it. I'm going to do it. This could get nasty if we're all trapped here and some awful stuff happens. Matume is going to charge up his book. He is going to look directly at the wall and say, In brightest day, in blackest night, no undead shall escape my sight. Let those who worship undead's might beware my power. Phrasma's light. <laughs> Realize we were purple lantern over here. <laughs> <laughs> Brooks and I just watched Green Lantern. Yeah. <laughs> Suck shit. <laughs> All right. So that would be. I rolled so bad. Uh, 26 to hit whatever I need to hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't need to hit it. It's just. I only have an 18 versus the will save. Okay. I think the will save is super low. I actually do think that succeeds. Okay. Do you care about regular damage no, or anything just a positive. Alright, let's do that then. Unless your regular damage is fire. No, it's not. Phew, real bad though. 11 points before reduction. Okay, so we're taking 5. Duran also saw this, I believe. Yes, however, he has a little bit more options when it comes to fire. And when I say that, it means that he's just gonna throw an explosive bomb at the wall. <laughs> and if we're not too terribly concerned about hitting objects, I can make sure I don't roll a one, but even still with splash, yeah. I don't roll a one. So he is going to use an explosive bomb. I don't know if this really matters, but that means it has 10 foot radius and can do some persistent fire. But let's do some damage here. Sure. So I assume you're gonna take it to a spot where, it like here where anybody. it doesn't hit anybody. Yep. It's going to be 31 points of fire damage. Okay. And then on its turn, when that happens, it'll take some persistent as the wall burns. All righty. Lyra did not see it. And it acts on initiative 10. So everyone that's in the hallway, everyone but Tulia needs to make a fortitude save. Eclipse has a 30 and the Lopper has a 22. Fail. 37 for Matumbe. And then Durin has a 23. Fail. 37 oh, fails? 37 is good. Okay. So 23 is a fail. Uska gets a 28 and Lyra a 15. Okay. Lyra's failed. Air Bear failed with a 26, but Ikmer rolled a natural 20. Ooh. You are actually both good meets beats. The 26. Oh. Ooh. I spoke too soon. So here's what happens. Those of you that succeeded are staggered for a round. You begin to gasp for breath. Everyone that has failed begins to suffocate. You cannot use verbal components. You're also staggered, obviously, uh, and you're beginning to die here. 
Eclipse, you're up. In the surprise round. So I can only do a standard action. Yes. Or a move action. Mm-hmm. So I am going to cast a flaming sphere. Okay. And I'm going to put it right there between uh, the lopper and air bear. Five foot big sphere. Okay. That will immediately do damage. It does 3d6 of fire. Okay. 14. Six, five, and a three. 14 fire. Okay. Ikmer, you do not get to act because it is the surprise round and you didn't see it. Air Bear, mm-hmm. you're up. It's the first full round of combat. All right. You're staggered. And everyone that has acted so far has made it pretty obvious to attack the heads with fire. I do not have another way to do fire damage. So being staggered, he is just going to run out of the room towards Tulia with his uh, one move action. Okay. 5, 10, 15, 20. There he goes. Doesn't quite make it out, looks like. Uska. Uh, I really wish Uska was standing up against a wall right now. You can take a five foot step when you're staggered. Perfect. Okay. Uska takes a five foot step next to the lopper right up to the wall and then she's going to pump a cure serious. So I need a will save. All right. We're looking at a 29. Ooh, yep. That succeeds. That is 15 points of damage then. That's halved. That's halved. Okay, perfect. Tulia. Okay, so Tulia is out of it, which is great. I am... Do, uh, wait, do we, we don't think these things would be hard to hit though, right? No. They're like stuck to the wall, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Neat, neat. The only thing you're dealing with, I'll just say behind the scenes, is you're dealing with hardness. Is that why we need the flame or...? The flame is the only thing that can actually damage it, but you're still having to, like, if you if you shot a lightning bolt at it, I'd just say that does nothing. With fire, if you're doing 30 points of fire damage like Durin is doing, you know, it's getting halved and then against hardness, like elemental damage does against hardness, but it's still progressing damage here. Gotcha, and yeah. it's not making a reflex save like it's doing a, you know, will save against the positive energy because none of this stuff can move. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I'm just looking up a spell here real quick. So if you throw a fireball at it, for yeah. instance, it'll take, you know, whatever your damage is, it's going to take the full damage, then that'll be halved before it applies to um, hardness, like energy damage does versus hardness. But it'll still be able to damage the haunt. Okay, I will pull out my Staff of Dark Flame. It is a caster level 8 item. It's a staff, so it uses your caster level. It uses my caster level. Great. I will cast Scorching Ray, and that gives me three rays. And I make range touch attacks, and it can deal 4d6 points of damage per ray. Perfect. So give me that damage per ray. 17 for the first one. 12 for the second one. 16 for the last one. That is the the only thing I can do this round. Okay, good stuff. Matumbe. Matumbe is under no ill effects because he succeeded last time. Just that. Um, oh, yeah, nothing. Because, you're, yeah, you're good. Exactly. Not that it really matters. I think he's just going to stand his ground and do the same thing. I know I'm burning through these channel smites, but it's the only really thing I can do right now. So you can toss a disruptor it. on there. If... Yeah, but that's going to be 1d6. Yeah. We're not talking much. I mean, this is 5d6, which isn't that much, but, you know, is what it is. See that save? Uh, well, it's only a 2 on the die, but it's still a 15. Yep, you got it. 18 before reduction. Okay, so 9. Again, that's good damage. You feel like, honestly, that did near the same damage as the bomb because of the way that the energy versus the positive energy works. Sure. Versus hardness. So you don't think this has a lot of hardness, but like, you, I mean, if you roll a religion on it, it's got five hardness. Okay. So the way that's going to work is like, when you do 30 damage with the bomb, it gets halved, so it's 15, and then against hardness, so you did 10 damage with it. Yuck. But it's still big damage. I mean, it's still 
you know, you can get past the hardness because you do enough damage. Mm -hmm. And then it's Durin's turn. God, I don't want him to suffocate to death. He's staggered right now. Yep. Why is my speed 20? Are you encumbered? Hmm. For so oh, because it's, it's I'm, I'm fatigued from something from a while ago. The dude, the hunger yeah, guy. That, mm -hmm. Yeah, fatigued all of you. Yeah, that's why my AC's crap and so is my speed. All right, so even with 20 feet of movement, he can't break outside of this effect. <sighs> Suffocation's no joke. He's going to move 20 feet. Okay. And then what do I need to do on my turn because I'm suffocating? Uh, you got to make another save. Fortitude? Yes. 26. 26 meets beats. Oh, wait. Do you get another save? The target fails. He immediately begins to suffocate. On the target's next turn, he falls unconscious and re is reduced to zero hit points. One round later, the target drops to negative one hit points and is dying. One round after that, the target dies. Each round, the target can delay that round's effects from occurring by making a successful fortitude save. But the spell continues. So you just delayed yourself falling unconscious. Sweet. And, and dropping to zero. So... So that, that's all you got to do. So I, yeah, I, I guess I should have said saved first, but it is what it is. Right, right. Saved, so, then moved, and that's it. Yep. So Lyra, I'm going to have you make a fortitude save now as well. Okay. That's a 19 for Lyra. Lyra falls unconscious at zero hit points. Oh, no. Lyra has two more saves. It happens that quickly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, suffocation is really bad. We got major issues because this is Emily and saves. Yep. Start rolling a new character. Eclipse, uh, go ahead and roll me the fortitude save for the Lopper. 15, Griffin. Lopper goes to zero hit points and drops unconscious. Now E can act, although Eclipse is also staggered, but just for this one round. Durin has uh, religion, right? Yes. I want you to roll it. Okay. Also, we just passed over what would have been 10 in initiative, and uh, with the explosive bombs, the wall should keep burning. Probably won't get through hardness. Yeah, let me know. Five. Okay. So it's negated. Okay. You want a religion check from him? Yeah, uh, him in particular because he just saved from this and kind of ran out. Ran out. Okay, that's pretty good actually. That's going to be thirty-eight. You know, two very important things. Mm -hmm. The first, that acted like a big ass spell. Okay. Leaving the area doesn't save you from it. Oh. You're affected now. Oh, that fucking from sucks. from the mass suffocation spell. Mm -hmm. But the second thing you know is that. If you put the haunt down, it stops immediately. It okay. doesn't act like a spell that lasts, you know, the spell would normally last rounds and rounds and rounds, and you have to keep saving. In this case, once you put the haunt down, that stops. So if you can get the haunt down within two more rounds, Lyra should be fine. So he, like, ran out of that hallway of heads, tried to gasp for air, just got nothing in his lungs, and with some of the little bit of air he has left, he's just like... Put it down as quick as possible. We can't escape it. So yeah, lopper down. Well, so the it, it's gonna take three d six damage immediately from the flaming sphere that's there. It's only five damage. Five total. Okay, doesn't seem like any of that went through. Yeah, I did roll very poor. <laughs> you could just take the horn up into yourself. Save everybody. No. You don't want to suck up the, the breath stealing hog? The sucker has become the sucked. <laughs> <laughs> it seems you wanted to suck. Little did you know. Throw that Uno reverse card out. <laughs> so unfortunately, the only fire damage I can do is... You've cure serious, right? Yeah. I don't know how many I've used. So Eclipse will take a five-foot step up Towards the wall, and then I will cast Cure Serious. Okay, we'll save from me. Ooh, natural one. Fourteen yes. is a fail. Yes, yes, yes. I just rolled six, six, six. <gasps> nice. Number of the beast, baby. Woo. <laughs> thirty. Ooh, thirty. You pump this positive energy into the wall, and all of the heads on the side of the wall just kind of like breathe out a sigh of relief at once, and the haunt has been dismissed. Woo! That got dangerous fast! Yeah. Uh -huh. I need you guys to finish your drinks, because we'll see you next oh. week. Oh my. I knew it.
Dance Laughter Productions is an officially licensed partner of Paizo Incorporated. Carrying Crown is copyright 2011. Carrying Crown and the Pathfinder Adventure Path are trademarks of Paizo. Paizo, Pathfinder, their respective logos, and all Paizo titles, characters, and artwork are properties of Paizo, Inc. and used with permission.